Welcome to the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans has been in business for nearly 80 years, helping Tennesseans with the best health care anywhere. Visit FBHP.com to learn more. We call this the OTP pregame with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and our special guest in the Snickers hot seat, Coach Dave McGinnis. Love a Snickers hot seat and love being the guest. Well, we're we glad you're here. here. Thank you. Ramon Foster did a fine job last week. As he always does. And now Coach Dave McGinnis takes over the spot. Uh, a couple things about the OTP and, and what's going on for the OT people. So you've asked, hey, wait a minute. We've got a Monday night OTP that comes out at 8 Central with Brian Callahan. Is that going to be every week? And the answer is? Yes. Yes. Except... The week of the Monday night game. Because he's coaching a game and can't do a radio he's show coaching with us. Because he's coaching a game. Warn you about that week. Uh, you'll want to make sure you're subscribed to the OTP because the week of the bye, because of the Monday night game and just how everything falls, it's going to be an audio only OTP. It is. So yes. So just, just getting that on the record now. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast, so which you, you should have done anyway. So honestly. you should be a subscriber to the OTP, so you have the option of listening. And if you're watching, you know that you've already gone to the Titans YouTube channel or TennesseeTitans.com. I think you, you can subscribe to that, too. Can you? I think so. Well, and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, and, that, and that's you what should I just be, said, yeah. Well, no, no, no. You should you I think subscribe. you can. You actually can. Yeah. You can subscribe to the Titans YouTube channel. <laughs> you can't subscribe we, to the OTP on the YouTube channel, but then you get everything no, on the Titans YouTube channel, yeah. which you want. We should put this on a sticky, but you guys can subscribe to everything. Absolutely. There, you, there it is. So uh, let me do something, too, <laughs> here before we get started, just personally. Uh, I've never been a big birthday person. No. And um, after 2001, I especially was an even less of a birthday person for good reason, yeah. having a September 11th birthday. But um, my birthday has just passed, and many people have been kind enough to wish me a happy birthday. Uh, the team put it out on X. They did. I was su surprised by that. Yeah. And um, then Ashley Farrell put out a video of me dancing in the booth to wish me a happy birthday, which many people saw on Instagram and the former Twitter. Yeah. And uh, not even bothered. You know, not even as annoyed as you would probably think I would be because the... Because Ashley put it out. If I had put it out, no, I'd be fired. No. But I... I <laughs> because I just very much appreciated all of the birthday greetings. I thank you for all of them. They made my day. And what especially made my day was all the pictures that people posted in different places where we've had a chance to meet at games, on road trips, at different team meetups outside of uh, playoff games in London, uh, when I stop at Starbucks, uh, you know, whatever, where we've met. And, and the pictures, and over the years, and I'm looking back, I'm thinking, oh, well, that was that year because I recognized the pullover or I – you know, recognize the glasses at that time. or Oh, yeah. I had those back then. So that was just great. So thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to the OT people and everyone else. Well, happy belated birthday. I had a wonderful birthday. Very kind. Good. People like you a lot, Mike Keith. Well, thank you, Coach. That's very kind. We like you a lot, Coach. And we, we like And we like you <laughs> on the OTP pregame, which comes out every Thursday night at 8 Central. So the OTP with Brian Callahan, Mondays at 8 Central, it hits. The OTP pregame, Thursdays at 8 Central, it hits. So you get two a week. You've got two a week. And now you know when and where to expect them. Yes. Hardest working people in show business. I'm right going to write all this down for you. All Don't right. Worry. So what we have is the OTP pregame. Uh, we have five topics. And here's topic one for Coach Mack. The Titans will practice this week and will enter Sunday's game with the Jets with every player from last weekend's season opener available. No one lost for the game. Is that really a big deal, or am I just making too much out of it? And if it is a big deal, why? Big deal. Big deal. Continuity is what you look for. And especially with this new staff 
and a new football team coming together, and you've got a lot of new players. Now, they've been together since the OTAs, but being able to get time on task in the regular season is really big. You don't want to get segmented with different people having to come in and out, in and out early in the season. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a real big deal for a coach, and it's a real big deal for the continuity and the, and the flow and the function of your football team. I can't remember that happening where the Titans have left week one healthy enough that they could go into week two with exactly the same group. It always seems like even if it's just for a week, you've lost one or two or three guys. Yeah. I I can't remember a time where it was completely the same from one to the next. And I think that to Max's point, that consistency is so good. Being able to get more time to kind of – gel together and become that unit that because of all the communication things of all the just choreography of making all of this work successfully having more time with the same people is so valuable so hopefully I mean knock on wood let's I mean let's keep this going as long as we can because the more consistency the better it feels like that the other thing about it is is you're getting uh, people even more people Back. Put on, mm-hmm. more, get more people back. This is a like Jamal Adams. This is a yeah. huge plus. Okay, huge. Can Brian Callahan and his offensive coordinator Nick Holtz design a game plan that can help Will Levis build confidence as he plays against this Jets defense? Well, they absolutely can, and every every game uh, takes on its own nature. But what you want to do, you want to you want to form it not only to the structure of the defense that you're playing against, but also to the to the character of of your team. They're just still finding out the character of this football team. But can they? That 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 is the design. That is what you that that's what you look at. You look at the matchups of who you're playing. You look at some of the things that you've done and see what you've done well. You've you've got a one game shot at this already, and you you see what you're going to have to be able to string together. But absolutely, they can. Every week, every week, the game plan is formed around the opponent that you are playing. You still got basic things that you work on all the time. But that's the difference in the National Football League going week to week to week is you got to form it depending on who you're playing. Now, Coach, I've never been a play caller in the National Football League or otherwise, but I know that when you're putting together your plan for game days, you try to script out some of like your first couple of plays, the things that you really want to make sure that you're you're getting in there. Are they going to put an extra emphasis on some things that we can definitely get this for Will? This is something that – is it going to be a home run? We don't know, but it's going to help him gain that confidence that things are going well. Are, are there some of the safety plays, I don't know, confidence builder plays that they can infuse into their plan? Most of the scripting is done to be able to get a, a look at how the defense is going to react to personnel groups, how they're going to react to what you set up. Now, you talk about getting a quarterback in rhythm. There absolutely is, not only with Will Levis, but with all the offensive coordinators I've been associated with. They like to give their quarterback something to get started. And, I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, starting your engine. You don't mash the accelerator to the floor the first time you get behind the wheel. But you'd like to get something started off. Then you can gradually start to accelerate. So the answer to that is yes. Now, it, it is different depending on the defense that you're playing against. Some defenses just won't allow you to do some things. But that's, that's what the game plan is about, tailoring some of those fast starters. And it's not explosive plays. It's to get in a rhythm. This is a chain progression offense. You want to get into that rhythm. When you say that, what do you mean, a chain progression offense? You're going to take what they give you early on. You're trying, you're trying to get in. Second down is huge for this offense, the way this offense is put together. Second downs are huge because what you can do with, with second downs as a, as a defense, if I have an offense in second and seven plus, the advantage goes to me because all of a sudden now I can do things that I wouldn't do on first down or on second and five or less. I just it, it, it limits you just like if you then if you put a, a, a defense in second and four, second and three, second and two. Now they're in a conflict situation. Because now still you've got second and three, so you've got a down that you might could say waste to try to hit something big, but at the same time you still got to defend the box. So 
the chain progression is big. They had a chain progression offense going in the first half. The chain progression, you could see it because – and then once defensive coordinators, which I have been one, defensive coordinators, as you start to move down the field on them, they, you get impatient. You get impatient, and that's when you look for and feel for as an offensive play caller, the impatience of it. So all of a sudden, are they going to start borrowing from the back end to get the, the front solidified so that you can take one-on-one shots downfield? How do you describe a Robert Sala defense? Well, it's, it's all predicated on the front. It's the defensive front. This is a free-flowing uh, defense with the back end. They, they play off of a front. And so everywhere that he's been, when he was in San Francisco, and then when he, when he comes to the J- – they build it off of a, of a big front and let the linebackers free flow off of it. And also, he would love to play the whole game rushing four and covering with seven. He's a big four-on-three, three-on-two guy with coverage. So if you can force him to, bring, to, to borrow from the back end, to bring somebody else down – now, he's got something right now that he's – really never had, uh, at, even at San Francisco. He's got Sauce Gardner. So when you've got a guy that is a, is a true, you know, you hear lockdown corner a lot as a term thrown out. But there are very few of them. This guy is one. So now he can let him have whoever he deploys him on and then work some things with his other 10. That is really when you've – I had one of those guys in my career, Aeneas Williams. So I could, I could just pretty much put the hat on Aeneas on the guy that, I, that we knew was going to be the most dangerous as a quarterback target and use the other 10. So that's what you're going to see out of him. I was listening to Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 this morning, and Solomon Wilcots was hosting, mm-hmm. and I, I respect his opinion. He said this morning that – he considers the Jets' defense to be a top three defense in the NFL, even though they didn't have a good game Monday night in San Francisco. What do you say to that? I, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. The other thing, the other thing that he's got when you start looking, just start looking at his personnel across the board. He has got what he's he's got that guy in the back end that you can one on one with, and then Quinn and Williams across the front. He plays him everywhere. Everywhere that he, he's going to find, they will get their game plan. They will find who they think is the soft spot of the offensive front, and that's where they're going to play Quentin Williams. And they can they move him, they move him a lot like what we used to do here when Jim Washburn would move uh, Albert Hainsworth around. You know, Albert Hainsworth was a defensive tackle, but a lot of times he would play out there on the end and do and work games with Kyle Van and Bysh inside. This is what he will do. But they've got the personnel, and plus he's got they've got the history, even with this group, of being a top five defense. I agree with Solomon. OTP pregame topic number three for Coach Mack. Did you notice anything different about Aaron Rodgers on Monday Night Football? He doesn't have the mobility that, that, that he's had in the past. When he first got into the league and he started being the gunslinger that he is, he, was, he could also run. He was an athlete. Clearly now at 40 years old, coming off of an Achilles injury, he's more stationary. He has still got the arm. He's got the arm, and even more so with the arm, he's got the knowledge. You're not going to give him things that he hasn't seen. He's seen most everything that, that you can give him. So when you play quarterbacks like this, you play quarterback like Peyton Manning, those kind of guys, you're not going to fool them. So you've got to be really, really conscious of your technique. You've got to be so technique sound against guys like this. And your, your front and your back end have to be tied specifically together because if you've got a young quarterback – You can do a lot of things, bogey, disguise, move around, jump around, and they'll bite on it. Veteran quarterbacks don't bite the cheese on this stuff. They just don't. You have to play solid, solid fundamentals. You can get away with a little bit of a little bit of free balling uh, when you've got a younger quarterback with a veteran. No. Any other comments on that topic? Well, so the strategy has to be to force him to move around then, right? If he doesn't have the mobility piece anymore? Well, that just comes with with getting pressure. And it it, it comes, first of all, and it's it's a legitimate question, but against, against a quarterback like that that has got limited mobility to start with, inside pressure. Inside pressure. Because really edge pressure doesn't bother veteran quarterbacks. 
because they can manipulate a pocket and move up in it even though even if even if their even if their vertical and their horizontal agility is limited than it was in their younger years but if you start uh, affecting and i mean moving that that center guard triangle back in his lap then there's nowhere to go there's nowhere to go younger quarterbacks will exit they'll exit out of the sides if you so you want to pressure older quarterbacks up the middle first i mean we've seen that we've seen that with the titans defense when we've played tom brady before we've done it you know right out here to play in tom you force the middle of the pocket it gives them no chance to manipulate and the titans have a Clubber Lang type rush in there with Tavondre Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons. I like that Clubber Lang yeah, type. Yeah, they got I a like, lot of more. They they got a lot of or more. Or as Clubber Lang would say, yeah, they got a lot of mo. Got, got a lot of mo. I like that, <laughs> but they do. <laughs> well, and just it, keep bringing it. It's Clubber mm-hmm. Lang straight ahead. <laughs> and it's with good. and and and, and with the way Tavondre Sweat, you know, in his in his first debut, I mean, he he's a guy that when they get into the meetings on Wednesday, when you start putting up the roster with your meetings in the offensive meeting rooms they will have that red laser dot on this this guy we have to handle we knew we had to handle jeffrey simmons but this guy this guy we've got to handle hey titans fans celebrate each titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at kroger the very next day just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now let's be clear, it's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. The OTP pregame continues. Dave McGinnis is in the Snickers hot seat. Coach Mack, topic number four, what must the Titans' offensive line do significantly better against the Jets? Pass protection. Their pass protection must be better. This this defensive front is going to bring heat. And we, we talked earlier about what is the strength of this defense. It's the front. It's the front. So you, you just need to be more technique sound because you know what's they, – they gave us some pressures in the first ball game. And so that's what the Jets' defense is looking at right now. So technique with your protection is from, from tackle to tackle all the way through has got to be better. What do you think this week is like for J.C. Latham? A, a huge learning week. A huge learning week. I mean, the, the, his the advantage that he has is he has Bill Callahan as a mentor. I mean, the, the, this this thing, their last game will be gone over frame by frame as far as the protection because, and what happens to younger players? And I haven't talked to J.C. Latham. We haven't talked to him, but just in my experience. That first game they get into, a lot of times if it starts getting a little bit hot, they start reverting back to what they haven't worked on. So that that will be reinforced. It's a huge – I know how conscientious he is. I think we all do. The thing that, that to his advantage is, is he's got Bill Callahan in that room to frame by frame it with him. So, I mean, he's looking to improve. All right. Topic number five for Coach Mack on the OTP pregame. What part of the New York Jets offense is not discussed enough? Brees good Hall. Question. Brees Hall. Brees Hall is a really good back. Now, they, they the, the 49ers bottled him up. Surprised me. Brees Hall and their run game is – they went out and got some veteran offensive linemen. But the run game, and especially with the way that, that the quarterback is now – Brees Hall, don't sleep on Brees Hall. Don't think it's just an Aaron Rodgers, air it out, you know, and, and throw it to Garrett Wilson and, and, and f- spin this thing all over the field. They've got to stop the run. They did a good job last week of stopping the run. They've got to do a better job this week defensively of stopping the run. Brees Hall is a, is a legitimate elite back in this league. Nice. Yeah, I thought you were that was a great say, answer. I thought you were going to say Garrett Wilson. Well, Garrett Wilson is a – you're looking at Garrett Wilson, you think about the quarterback. But people always think about the quarterback and Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. So so 
Garrett Wilson, though. No, look. If, <laughs> I mean, wait, 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 I'm not arguing with you. I'm just going to make a different. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going argue. to make a different gonna... point. Okay, go Don't ahead. Don't get sensitive. No, go ahead. You, please. Yes, you, tell get... I, you, you tell I'm a sensitive human being. You really are. <laughs> Very sensitive. We'll have to stop the tape and oh, just have a little moment. Anyway, Garrett Wilson caught four passes in the first quarter for 46 yards against San Francisco. Uh, Bill Belichick was on the Manning cast. And – by the way, he was really good, and I, I'm not surprised at all. He's really, really good on all the media stuff he's doing. But he made the point, which I thought was interesting and quite a compliment toward Garrett Wilson. He goes, oh, I'd be doubling him. Hmm. But you know why? Why? If he's singled, that's where Aaron Rodgers is going. Even though he brought Alan Lazard with him mm-hmm. from Green Bay, if he's singled for the majority of the time, that's where he's going. So you double him just in order to say you've got to go do something else. You either you either do. And I'm not running Denard Wilson's defense. That's but, okay. But I know when we had when we had a guy like that, we would either we would either double, but you double him in different ways. You can up and back him. You can in and out him. You can do what we call bump slice him, where you start and you force him. You you start to force him outside, then overplay the inside with help coming. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. But if he senses single coverage, that I mean, when they start looking at those pads, that's where he's going. Which is interesting because he had four catches for 46 yards early, and then for the rest of the game, just two for 14. So I'm guessing they did something different. They heard Bill Belichick. They heard Bill Belichick. Well, uh, Bill Belichick's not wrong. <laughs> well, but that's what Bill Belichick always did, though, is he would say, okay, you've got this guy. He's not going to beat us. Well, they take away – Bill Belichick and Denard Wilson will do the same thing. Any good defensive coach, take the problems away. Right. Make them beat you without their known problem. All right. Well, that's good stuff. I don't believe I ever want to be bump sliced. That does not sound good. <laughs> Where did he say bump sliced? He said it's one of the ways that they would double cover him. When you he slice, when you slice bump somebody, sliced. When you bump slice, Jeez. bump slice. When you slice somebody in, in and out, you're just playing in and out. If you bump slice them, you get up there and press them, Mm-mm. and then you. I'm gonna you, write this down. Bump slice. Bump slice. Do you, you want to be pressed and then sliced? Uh uh-uh. uh. You nope. You, you bump slice them, so I mean it's something that you do on really good receivers and good quarterbacks because then now they think you're inside out on them. You start to force them outside, then you jump outside and overplay the out, trying to encourage. If they think, okay, all right, now we're playing inside technique and over the top. You bump slice them, start to force them with that inside leverage, then jump outside of them and bring somebody else down on the inside. Sounds uncomfortable. It does. Mm-hmm. He's That's been, what all I'm saying. He's been quite good. Mac? Oh, yeah. He's great. Not, not a surprise. Yes, go we, to Mac. We have to do a couple other things on the OTP pregame. The first thing we have to do is the key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars, and I have to do it in 60 seconds or less. Wait. Hold, please. Hold, please. I must set my watch. Begin. Aaron Rodgers lasted only four plays in 2023, but he already has a game under his belt in 2024 and will be ready to come to Nashville on Sunday. Even in his early 40s, Rodgers still does a lot of things well, especially when he is improvising. Key number one, don't let Aaron Rodgers improvise. Key number two, take advantage of early scoring chances. Robert Sala's defense forces mistakes with heat, but as you saw in San Francisco, the Niners built a lead and put the Jets' defense on their heels. For the Titans this Sunday, they have to take advantage of early scoring chances and hope to keep the Jets' defense at bay. Key number three is be prepared for a special teams assault. The Jets have one of the best special teams coordinators in the league in Brant Boyer, and special teams didn't have a great game in Chicago. Tennessee must execute on special teams on Sunday, and that's not just talk. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of the Tennessee Titans. From now until September 15th, get free delivery when you order Little Caesars. Pizza, no, pizza. <laughs> there's no catch <laughs> at participating <laughs> locations only. You only get one pizza per person per day. Pizza, pizza. Don't be greedy. So you only get pizza. You get. Not pizza, pizza. Yeah, no, you get pizza. <laughs> pizza, but pizza. But they have pizza, pizza. They have pizza, pizza, but you get one pizza. All right. One a day. Yes. How long did that take me, by the way? I don't know. I accidentally turned on my timer <laughs> from 
putting my child to bed <laughs> instead of my stopwatch. We'll call it 45 seconds. I don't know. <laughs> Three minutes and 31 okay, seconds now is how much you have left. We have to conclude <laughs> this edition of the OTP pregame with a mayo tovation from hell. Oh, why, by the way, Coach. We didn't give him his pizza, but hang, I have mayonnaise. Hang on. You got to hold these. Just for fun. Just for fun. Hold them. Hold them. Thanks. Yes. I thought you just got one. I got three. You got <laughs> yeah. pizza, 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 pizza. And you pizza, only pizza, get pizza. one. This is a mayo tovation from Hellman's. Amy, go right ahead. Mayo Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo chicken dip make <laughs> you proud. Or make your mama proud. Whichever. The, the official, official mayo ma- of the Tennessee Titans. Mayo game day be delicious. I think I'm going to change the the cuisine as the season goes on. Is that right? There are other mayonnaise-based foods other than buffalo chicken, chicken dip. salad. Chicken salad, deviled love, eggs. I love chicken salad. Potato salad, but a good I mean, coleslaw. They, but they say you're supposed to say that. That's what. Yeah, but I think we're going to highlight the variety well, of I mean, what Hellman's has to offer. Well, I understand that, but I don't think you can change the copy they send us. <laughs> sure, I can. No, you can't. <laughs> sure, I can. This is great. Turn it like that. You can make all kinds of stuff with Hellman's. See, the great thing about Coach Mack is he's doing all these ads. <laughs> I mean, have you heard how many ads he's doing on the radio? You can't listen to the radio without hearing C- Coach Mack. <laughs> what are you not advertising Pizza. these days? Pizza. Yeah. He's like he's like Charles Barkley and Peyton Manning. He's on. <laughs> he is. He's on like everything he's right now. Insurance, Pizza. printer ink. Pizza. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cars, trucks, Man- mayonnaise, vans, on, mayonnaise, mayonnaise on pizza. <laughs> mayonnaise on pizza. <laughs> trucks, that's right. It's crazy <laughs> how much stuff he's selling right now. I turned on the radio the other day, and three of the four commercials were Coach Mac. I love it. The best part about it is people are buying it here. Pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. The, 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 they don't want to say pizza. They want to say pizza, pizza. But you can Caesars. only get well, one pizza. As I said, pizza, pizza. Uh, sales are going to go through the roof right now. They better get some more dough cooking. <laughs> get more they got to give you cooking. some dough for doing that. <laughs> Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. (laughs) SeatGeek. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. For Uh. Dave McGinnis and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. (laughs) We're glad you have enjoyed this edition of pregame on the OTP. Pizza, pizza. (laughs) OTP, OTP. Pizza, pizza. You only get one pizza a day. Mayo, have a great time listening. (laughs) 